We've come here to the Isle of Wight, known as the UK's Dinosaur Island, to look for some of the fossils and geology that this place has to offer. We're going to be visiting beaches, museums and other things as well. What are the other things? Just looking around really. Just going to look around the Isle of Wight. Yeah. Let's go! The Isle of Wight is a fantastic location for finding dinosaur fossils. The geology of the island means that in two areas along the coast, the well-known Wealdon group of rocks are exposed, and it's in these sequences that many dinosaur remains have been found. The island is quite rich in dinosaur species, with more than 20 different ones identified from here, and some species that were completely new to science when they were first uncovered on this island. Okay, so we're down here on uh, Yeveland Beach now, um, and all of this is these rocks here are early Cretaceous in age. Uh, so it's the Wessex formation of the, the Wealdon group. And um, you can see some exposed, variably colored <coughs> uh, sandstones and clays. And apparently there should be a lignite bed around here somewhere. It might be in a slightly wrong area for that, not sure. And this beach here, there's actually a dinosaur named after it, which is Yevalandia. So you can find uh, dinosaur, fish and reptile remains here. Not sure if we're going to find anything right now. Uh, this beach is apparently quite overcollected. It's a popular spot. Usually quite easy to get to, although we may have misjudged the tides slightly today. Uh, so yeah, see if we can find something. Not sure if we will, but we'll give it a go. So uh, let's look over here, where it seems like there's been a, a fall, possibly recently. Um, well, I'm just uh, dig in there. Let's have a look. This is probably not what you meant to do at all. <laughs> this, is, this is the most amateur like, fossil search ever. That is yeah. the grass. There's rock. There's a... Oh, found something over here. Whoa. This uh, very rare. Look at that. Camp Free Sun. Should probably land a bin somewhere. Bin. Well, I mean, we're going to be going to the um, Dinosaur Island Museum in a second. Right, we've got the trek up back now. Yeah. Most exciting part of our journey. Well, I think the uh, beaches we go to later should be a lot better. Jeez, and we fell over them. Got some uh, footprints here, laid down in soft sediment if they were to be infilled. And uh, if the fight could get some uh, trace fossils sometime in the future. Uh, dog. Not having had much success finding anything on Yeverland Beach, and after our treacherous ascent back up the cliff, we headed over to the Dinosaur Isle Museum. We've now come here to Dinosaur Isle, and uh, we're going to take a look around at all the wonderful displays inside of the famous Isle of Wight dinosaurs. The, um, the geology and fossil collection of the Isle of Wight used to be held in the Sandown Library, but uh, that closed when in 2001, this building opened, purposely built to hold the geology and fossil collections. Uh, the outside resembles a giant pterosaur, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go and have a look around. Do you think we found a dinosaur? I'm not sure it's actually a dinosaur. <laughs> there's, there's something here. <laughs> Like the first scene of Jurassic Park. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got to be the rest of it. What do you mean the rest of it? Well, there's the other layer to do. Oh, for Christ. Right, well, um, leave that one for now, I think. Yeah. Let's carry Don't on. Don't your hand. Leave that one to the questions. The Dinosaur Isle Museum has a great display of the prehistoric life that can be found on the Isle of Wight. From life-size reconstructions of Iguanodon, to the original fossil bones of Neovenator, there is a lot to see and learn here. Right, so here we've got Iguanodon, one of the very famous dinosaurs found here on the Isle of Wight. And uh, as you can see, it's got quite large thumb spikes on its uh, hands there. And um, they're possibly used for defense, maybe in intraspecific intra combat as well. Both body, body fossils and trace fossils of the Guandon are known from the island. Um, and they're commonly found in the plant debris beds. Uh, they probably fed on things like cycads, maybe on um, tree ferns that are quite high up off the ground. 
It was once thought that two different species of Iguanodon could be found on the island, the larger Iguanodon bernisartensis and the more gracile Iguanodon atherfieldensis. However, later research has shown that there were actually two distinct genera of Iguanodontids present here, and the more gracile species was renamed Mantellisaurus atherfieldensis after Gideon Mantell, the original describer of Iguanodon. Okay, so here's the, um, the Barnes High sauropod. And uh, a lot of the bones you see here are actually fake, but there are some real ones. And an interesting thing you see with uh, sauropods on the Isle of Wight, uh, usually it's the limb bones that are the most common, commonly found. And uh, so they, they think that that could be due to an effect called miring, where the uh, sauropods are all traveling along their group and they um, step on unstable ground. And their legs sink into the ground, they get stuck and are vulnerable to predators. So the upper part of their body they get dispersed and uh, aren't covered in sediment, while their limbs trapped on the ground and become fossilized. And so that could be why we find so many limb bones of sauropods on the Isle of Wight. Somebody's been taking advantage of America's new drug laws. And here we've got Hypsilophodon, one of the smaller herbivores known from the Isle of Wight. There's actually a, uh, a layer in the Wessex formation of the early Cretaceous beds here known as the Hypsilophodon beds, and almost a hundred skeletons of these animals are known from there. Um, Hypsilophodon used to be thought to be an arboreal species uh, because of its um, well-developed fourth toe, the hallux. They thought they could use it to grip onto branches, kind of like bird, some birds do today. Um, turns out that wasn't too right. They're actually more sort of gazelle-like in their behavior and uh, run, run around on the ground. The fact that so many skeletons of these animals have been found in a single bed has led paleontologists to think Hypsilophodon probably lived in herds. Since they were much smaller than other herbivores found here, this species likely would have fed on shorter growing plants such as cycads and ferns, and possibly on bits of plant material dropped by grazing iguanodonts. Let's see what the, uh, this one makes. That's interesting. It seems quite similar, doesn't it? It, seems, it also seems a bit similar. Hang on a second, they're all the same. Oh, no, no, never mind. Sounds like a guy screaming. <laughs> <laughs> this is a neovenator, an allosauroid which was around seven to eight meters long. It was an apex predator of the time, and the interesting thing about this particular one or this particular dinosaur, was that the first evidence of it was found in plant debris here at Brightstone, which is in the Isle of Wight. But we are now to look at dinosaurs and stuff. Neovenator was very well adapted for its carnivorous diet, with teeth that are strongly compressed from side to side and curved backwards. This allowed the animal to effectively slice the flesh of its prey, which may have included Iguanodon, Mantellisaurus, and possibly the smaller Hypsilophodontids that shared its habitat. So here we have Eotyrannus, a basal tyrannosauroid from the uh, early Cretaceous, and uh, it's about four meters long. You can see the digit two is actually uh, almost as long as the humerus itself and um, there are some unfused bones in this animal, suggesting it wasn't actually fully grown when it died, and so possibly could have grown longer than four meters. As a possible early relative of the famous T-Rex, this species helps to provide more context regarding how this iconic group first evolved. A decently sized theropod, but still not as big as the other predators that lived in the same place, Eotyrannus would probably have hunted Hypsilophodon and any additional small creatures it could find. This here is a Polocanthus, a uh, herbivore found in Brystone Bay. Uh, it's from the early Cretaceous, around 112 million years ago, and as you can see, its most prominent feature are its spikes and osteoderms and its armour plating, which would have defended it from many uh, theropods that would have hunted it. Uh, the most common thing you find from this specimen is the osteoderms fossilised. Making up a noticeable part of this animal's armour was a broad plate composed of bone that was positioned over the top of the hips, shielding them from attack. A potential brain case of Polycanthus has actually also been found on the island, and when alive, this creature would most likely have been a low-browsing generalist feeder.
<laughs> Here we have Baryonyx walkeri, a approximately nine meter long Spinosaurus that was found in England. Uh, you only find a very few fragmentary bones and teeth of this animal on the Isle of Wight, but um, it was adapted to eating fish. Uh, since the bone, bones of a fish species uh, with Lepidotes were found in the original specimen, uh, as well as iguanodon bones as well, so it's probably fed on them also. Um, as you can see, the teeth are only very slightly compressed uh, towards the sides, and they're very finely serrated, making them really well suited to uh, gripping onto slippery fish. Although the first fossils of Baryonyx were not found on the Isle of Wight, but in Surrey, Fragments of bones and teeth are known from the island, indicating that this animal would once have been present here, sharing this prehistoric environment with all the other dinosaurs we've encountered. After we'd finished looking around the museum, we headed out again to further explore the paleontological sites of the island. There we go, there's the museum. There's Ben. There's Oliver. He's me. And back to Das Car now. We intended to visit another museum, the Dinosaur Expedition Centre on Dinosaur Farm, but when we got there we ran into a slight problem. Shut, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, come on. Right. So, cutting our losses, we journeyed on to another beach where we hoped to find some traces of ancient life. So we arrived at our second beach of the day, we're not going to get to a third because we ran out of time. There it is. Very nice. Isn't it beautiful? Apparently there's some lovely footprints here, so hopefully we'll find some really nice ones to show you guys. We're now here at Compton Bay, where the rocks are a uh, Wealden group, so early Cretaceous in age, mostly of the Wessex Formation, and the um, purple, pink and blue sediments you see here were all laid down over 126 million years ago in a, an ancient floodplain deposit. The geology that's exposed along this beach makes Compton Bay a perfect spot to find fossils. The cliffs are being eroded fairly rapidly here, meaning many fossils of dinosaurs and other organisms that lived and died on the floodplain can be found. So we've actually uh, managed to find some fossils here. If we uh, look down here, let's dig that out. Some pretty nice bivalves in there. And then also here, found some more. These are just all coming out of um, this cliff here that seems to have collapsed recently. We've used advanced technologies to create a computer simulation of what the end of the dinosaurs would look like. There, dinosaurs gone. Although we didn't manage to find any dinosaur bones in the short time we had to stay on the beach, we were able to locate some incredible trace evidence that dinosaurs once ruled these lands. We've been searching the beach for hours and we finally found a brilliant footprint. We have. Look at that. This uh, probably was made by an iguanodon and uh, basically they formed when a herd of them would have been walking uh, on a floodplain next to a river and then suddenly it would have burst its banks and uh, flooded all of the plains, depositing uh, sand and sediment, basically infilling the, uh, the, the prints they made and eventually forming these rocks. Very nice cast of footprints. We've seen several of the beach. Yeah. The footprints are a truly wonderful glimpse of the environment that has been frozen in time in the rocks of this island. Millions of years ago, dinosaurs walked along next to a river, leaving behind a legacy that can still be witnessed today by anyone wandering along the beach. After our successful location of some pretty great fossils, it was time for us to leave the Isle of Wight, and we just about made it back to the ferry on time. We've really enjoyed filming here on the Isle of Wight, seeing all these amazing fossil deposits, museums and beaches. Thank you all for watching the video. If you'd like to find out more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us. Oh god damn, I love dinosaurs.